Good evening, everyone. Shenanigans can stop. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight for our board meeting. I'd like to invite you to join us in the <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, to the flag of the United States of America and the republic for which it stands. Our next order of business is to adopt the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Adopted. Oops. On our next up, we have monitoring district operations. This is the operational expectations OE9 communicating with the public. This is a second reading and Uh, members of the board have received the superintendent's reasonable interpretation and indicators on operational expectations OE9 communicating with the public. It's now the board's responsibility to consider the reasonable interpretation and indicators as presented. Um, I would like to call on Dr. Steech to give us a short review of um, this policy. So I'm not going to go into it. Oh, that's a hot mic. <laughs> It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> can hear you. I'm not going to go into this in the same detail as I did two weeks ago. Um, but OE9 on communication, <coughs> communicating with the public um, has four main sections. One is relative to the timely flow of information, accurate input, and strategic two-way communication between the district and the public that builds understanding and support. Um, the interpretation references more of our significant initiatives and projects in the district and ensuring that we do, truly have dialogue and two-way communication is part of that. Um, second area is assuring that district successes are shared with the public locally and other appropriate audiences. Um, at the board's urging, that was modified to not only talk about us giving presentations, but also hosting people in the district to visit our programs, um, such as Gila as an example. Third section was maintaining very district-sponsored information sources that provide clear, pertinent, relevant, timely, and easily accessed information. And the last portion or section dealt with an annual report to be provided to the community on the progress of the district. Um, measurements in the first three will be were, will include a community survey that will be made public. And we have identified what questions we're going to use for those. And when we bring this back for a mon monitoring report, we will include the uh, threshold levels that would be reasonable indicators. Um, at this time, we still have to do some baseline determination on those questions on what a solid baseline would be and what the expectation should be. So I've received no comments or input over the last two weeks since we presented this for first reading. So therefore, at this time, I ask the board to accept the reasonable interpretation and indicators of operational expectations OE9 as presented for second reading and adoption. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any comments or questions by the audience on this policy? Okay, seeing none, um, then I'd like to call for a motion. I move that the board accept the superintendent's reasonable interpretation and indicators for operational expectations OE9, communicating with the public as presented for second reading and adoption. I second that. I'll open it up now for questions or comments by the board. Add this time. Out for what we've been wanting to do as far as. And one thing I like is that on that on that fourth item, talking about an annual report, and we would focus on the results, and the results are what we're you know, specifying in our results policies. I, I really like that alignment. Um, so, good job. F no, this time. <laughs> Oof, I'm, it's a miracle. He, he, you anticipated my questions and answered them before I could. Uh, 
take care of that. But you know, I'm in support of uh, the wording and the uh, intent uh, and the interpretation. About all I have to say this time. And I, I just want to um, have a little bit of a clarification here that this is the um, direction from the board in how we communicate. Um, as a district and it's separate from the board's communication plan that we will be doing to receive input from the various stakeholders and constituents and districts so that will be um, as that's developed that'll be made more public as well so communication is huge for us and we want to make sure that we have um, policies in place and um, ways that we can communicate with various different um, members the community staff students um, and so that's our heads are right now on all of this so thank you John for your work on on putting that together for us um, so we'll now take a vote to adopt OE 9 as presented all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed and um, operational expectations OE9 is is you okay. um, I missed something in the beginning that I want to not forget I would like to acknowledge that we have a student in the audience tonight and I would I hope you don't mind if you could let us know your name and what you're doing tonight here I know you've got some papers and you're taking notes so something's going on <laughs> okay and which school do you go to oh good well welcome and if you want to ask any questions or anything at the end of the meeting feel free to come up Oh, okay <laughs> what how did how did the two of you become friends awesome oh I love that uh, nice that's nice and here you are together still that's perfect good for you <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk to you after the board meeting, okay? All right. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Good. They're always here with the best reasons. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, now we have the board consent agenda. Um, on the consent agenda, we have uh, minutes of regular board of directors meeting from Tuesday, October 10th and October 16th. Do I have a motion for approval of the board consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Then we have the superintendent's consent agenda. Um, I know we have, um, you need to repeat on part of that. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on that. Um, due to a remote interest in Microsoft stock, I need to recuse myself from accounts payable warrant voucher number 338659. Hey, do I have approval or do I have a motion for approval of the superintendent's consent agenda? I move for approval of the superintendent's consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And now one of our favorite back again the good news report I'd like to call up Gail Spoler because she is always the bearer of good news thank you for accommodating us yeah. we, back just, by missed, popular we demand. just missed you I know I know it you know it as much as it, you know we've gone back and forth about this I guess the the one thing I do want to acknowledge not only do we have a lot of good news in the district that um, for four years, Michelle Guernsey, who was our Secretary in Community Relations, was the good news person and really did a great job in pulling it all together and making sure it was month. 
And since um, Michelle has moved on to take care of Matt Handelman and Chris McMurray, Shelley Bowers, um, our new community relations secretary has taken on the task. And apparently it was, it's been quite daunting for both when Michelle first did it and Shelley, they feel a great responsibility to make sure everything's complete, names are spelled correctly, all of the information is compiled in a timely manner. So we really wouldn't have the good news without um, the wonderful work of both Michelle previously and Shelley now. So that's nice. I wanted to acknowledge that. That a lot. So let's just jump right in. <laughs> um, as you know, John does um, breakfast with the superintendent on a monthly basis. So you'll see a photo up there with a lively session from White East recently. Tell you a little bit more about how lively it was. Um, but it is always an interesting um, endeavor for those of you that have sat in. So photo from Y East. Um, when we were at the Honored Citizen Tour at Gila, we were very fortunate to meet um, a student who's been selected to do a fast pitch at the Bioscience Research Showcase at OMSI. She is the only high school student in the region. Um, that pitch, Z Weimer. Um, she has a very um, interesting um, pitch, and it has to do with um, bioscience, bioethics pieces that um, it's amazing she can do it in three minutes. But again, very proud of her for being the only student that will be presenting with um, a number of very high level folks there to listen to her. For the second time in three years, um, a student from Mountain View High School has been selected the AP Female Scholar of the Year from the class of 2017, Annie Liu. Um, in 2015, there had been a previous um, female AP Scholar selected um, as the state um, champion. So very, very good news for Mountain View and very good news for Annie. Um, our newcomers program at Furcrest Elementary has recently been chosen to receive the Imagine Learning's Beacon School Award. It's the first time they've actually presented it to a program rather than an entire school, so a very um, special award for them. And as you saw recently in the Columbian, um, a nice article about the program. So I'm skipping over to the Washington State University Extension um, SNAP Ed program. And as you know, they partner with our elementaries and introduce a seasonal food each month. Um, I was actually surprised that it was zucchini and they actually had to buy zucchini or bring in zucchini from a farm in Canby. I would have thought that we would have had an abundance here in the region, yeah. but um, they had enough to feed 450 students and it will continue to be on the menu. And um, the mixture of yellow and green roasted zucchinis were mostly a thumbs up by most of the students. I should add, I used to live across the street from Montecuco Farm. <laughs> and I believe that a few of the zucchinis it that have shown up in the table in our lunchroom might have come from the Steech Garden, too. So again, apparently we're paying attention. You get the mazoodle maker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I just thought it was funny they had to import zucchini given the abundance in everybody's gardens. But um, the good news is the kids liked it. Um, Heritage High School put on their first blood drive of the year recently, and they had 100 students sign up and over 75 pints collected, and that was in conjunction with Blood Works Northwest, and that blood will stay here in the community to help. Uh, last week, Peggy Carlson, uh, our homeless liaison, was honored with the Identity Clark County Learn Here Real Heroes, and then she was also recognized with one of our long-term, oh, Peggy, that's why everybody's <laughs> yes. waving. She just came in. Just in time. Peggy, <laughs> Peggy's here, um, it, but she was also accompanied by one of our school volunteers, Linda Morehouse, who it, they call her Grandma Linda, and she volunteers at Orchards Elementary. She previously was an uh, Evergreen staff member, I believe at Pioneer, but she just enjoys coming in and provides hours and hours of service at the Family Resource, uh, or Family and Community Resource Center at Orchard. So picture of Linda and Peggy receiving their award. 
Mountain View High School Band and its directors have been recognized by the National Band Association for a Program of Excellence Blue Ribbon Award. So they are the Northwest Division winner and they are in the running to be a national winner and we'll know in December how that turns out for them. Um, we briefly touched on the golf tournament last board meeting, but the results are in. Almost $8,000 raised for Evergreen Citizens for Schools. And there's no mention of anybody's um, scores, but a nice thank you to our sponsors. <laughs> and then um, the Connect Evergreen Coalition uh, recently was notified that they received a five-year, $625,000 federal grant from the Drug-Free Communities Program, and that is also renewable for an up to an additional five years, so $1.25 million that will be coming into the region to help address substance abuse among the youth here within. That's your good news back. Thank you very well. much. I enjoyed that tremendously. We always have such good news, it's a shame not to talk about it. Hey, uh, now we get Mike. Um, <laughs> he better have some good news or there's gonna be a problem. <laughs> um, we have a budget update and uh, Chief Operations Officer Mike Merlino will do this. I just appreciate Gail's good work. Thanks, Gail. Um, <laughs> We do not have, um, I don't have the documents yet. Uh, I'm, I wanted to get two months worth of uh, payroll and counts payable in before we started to do the estimates. But I wanted to just update you really quickly that uh, last year, the 16-17 year is almost completely done, that we go through the year-end closing process. Um, Bill Thackeray leads that, does a great job. and. Uh, it looks like last year our numbers were about, about break even in terms of fund balance. So we, I think, had been looking all year long that that would be the case, and uh, that was the case. Uh, next month when we have our uh, budget update, I can give you the final numbers, let you know, and then I think we usually at one of the workshops get a little deeper into the detail on the previous year. We'll do that. Um, also mentioned uh, earlier at some of the earlier meetings about our enrollment. Uh, and the kind of the slowdown, if you will, at the elementary level. I've kind of talked with a few other districts in the area. Um, Vancouver had indicated that they were tracking about with what they would have expected, which was a decline, but not quite the decline that we um, have experienced thus far. Um, but I also spoke with the Camas folks, and they're seeing enrollment uh, uh, growth lower than what had been expected, more similar to what is happening here. Uh, and in discussing with uh, Catherine Carrison, our ELL uh, program manager, it, the, the numbers year to year in ELL are, have not increased. And actually, if you look at the last three years, our ELL program has kind of, it's grown fairly exponentially. I think we've grown about 100 to 200 kids a year. So, and if you looked October to October, we've been growing about 100 plus students. Uh, and this year, we actually declined from last October to this October. So, uh, we're still kind of trying to dig into the, the numbers and look at the why and do, do our best interpretation of what has um, happened. Uh, her view is similar to what others have said is the co cost of housing, that there are other areas that the cost of housing. Um, and she's thinking that, that uh, she's hearing that some of the families have moved into the battleground area. So we're kind of waiting to see what the October numbers look like when they're posted for other districts around to just kind of see what that is at. I mentioned earlier uh, that, that will, there will be a financial impact on the current year, and I would expect that that number will be probably between the one and a half to two million in terms of with the enrollment drop. But as I've said, it's really based upon how much do we grow. We typically grow throughout the year, and it could be that we'll grow more, um, but we'll update that. So um, nothing new will get November's enrollment next week. Uh, we'll have October. And then we'll start to kind of get a sense of what are our estimates for this year. I don't, I don't anticipate any issues, shortfalls in the 17-18 uh, school year with respect to the enrollment drop. But it just makes it just makes it a little more difficult than it might have otherwise been. So, I want to give you a quick update, a little quicker than than Gail's, but uh, I'm happy to answer <laughs> any visual questions. Visual aids. She did. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned uh, noticed that Peggy's here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 
Samantha. Hi, Peggy. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer, and I'm also happy to go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> questions for, for Mike? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Mike. <laughs> We're recording this for social media, and he's cracking wise. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> next up we have a superintendent's report. So as Gail mentioned, I do a monthly breakfast with the superintendent where I rotate to the different schools. And you know, part of the reason I do this is to share information with students about how the district is operated. But another reason I do this is it gives me a focus group of students to talk to. And there was a gem of a moment that occurred at Y East last Friday. Because um, student, I was talking to the students about um, distributing mobile devices and the Chromebooks out to the students, and so the question came up: Are they going to get to keep them for the summer? And we've been discussing, and we haven't finalized it, but our our thinking now is to go ahead and allow the students to keep them over the summer. Other than I shared with them that we would have the eighth graders turn them in so that we could give those devices to sixth graders, and seniors would turn theirs in, and we would give those to freshmen. And about ten minutes later, during the breakfast, this one girl looked at me and said, I got a question. Why in the world can't I just take my device to high school with me? And I sat there for a minute and I thought, this is bureaucracy and inventory purposes that would probably deprive a student, of, you know, almost 1,800 to 2,000 students of having a device over the summer to extend their learning. I bet you that's something we could overcome. So I stopped, you know, made a point to the students and said, this is why I do these breakfasts. Because here, a seventh grade girl just asked me a question that just changed potentially the way we're going to collect and distribute devices as a school district. That's great. And it's because she's yeah. thinking outside of the box. And she just asked the question why. So that's, to me, the, the essence of the value of getting in and having those focus groups and talking to, to kids about what's going on and how our decisions actually impact them. Um, in addition, we had the Honored Citizens Tour um, recently, which went, went very well. Um, Rob's probably going to talk about that as well, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, we have upcoming a trip where Todd and Victoria and I are going to be going to Colorado um, to work with the Aspen Group with their Wisdom Sharing Conference to discuss with other districts who have implemented our governance model that we recently adopted policies for this last summer so that we can better learn on how to do this implementation and work our way through that. So that's coming up next week, very quickly. And a last quick thing I just wanted to share with the board, we're in the final, final details of confirming another potential fundraiser event for the Education Foundation. And right now we have on the books for May 11th, which is the Friday night of Mother's Day weekend, Mardi Gras in Vancouver where we will have a New Orleans jazz band featuring Wessel Warm Daddy Anderson, who used to play for Wenton Marsalis as his saxophonist, bringing up a band and having a gumbo Cajun um, dinner and talking to Chef Desi, who's his wife. She finished eighth out of 72 entries in a Louisiana gumbo competition this past weekend. So we're on the... Getting the final details in place for how all the logistics are going to work, and we'll be hopefully getting more information out. But I'm really excited um, to be hopefully having another good, solid fundraiser for our education foundation into the future. That sounds fun. Yeah. Okay. Wanted to make sure you got it on your calendars early. Yep, it's already there. <laughs> good. That's all I got. Okay, great. Thank you, John. Um, um, now's the time for board comments. Does the board have anything to add? Kind of just to piggyback to um, the foundation, we had our annual planning meeting last week, I think it was last week, um, where we talked about, because they had mentioned the partnership with working with John and Gail and getting some of those ideas about what priorities the district has so they, that we can make sure that our fundraising and our marketing strategically in that area. Um, and they were really excited to be able to work with you, John, and you have your ideas for uh, the, the next fundraiser and, and having you on board with that. So <coughs> it was a good meeting, and hopefully we're going to get some new marketing strategies out there, so the ways that we can support the district. Actually, I forgot to mention something about this event. <clears throat> on the Thursday night before, the plan is to have the jazz band work with our high school students for a full-day workshop 
with the students and put on a student performance on Thursday night. And then the food will actually be cooked by the culinary program at Cascadia. So Desi will be working with the students at Cascadia and our chef Jason um, to prepare the dinner. Well, so it's nice. going to be an educational experience for our kids that will be fully supporting this event. That is awesome. I love that. That's good. I just have one more thing. Um, last night, I, Rob and I actually, I drove Rob along with me, and we uh, did the judging for the We the People competition at Heritage High School, and it's always a lot of fun um, to watch those kids perform their speeches about the Constitution. Um, really well thought out speeches, and then <laughs> we gave them some pretty tough questions back, and they were able to answer our questions and um, engage in pretty good dialogue. and. They're going to be taking a team to state. A lot of fun. I enjoy doing that competition. I was blown away. It was evidence of uh, top-notch teaching. Because uh, I don't think that I, I, I was, there are a few high schoolers who take an interest in constitutional issues and, and uh, politics uh, in the broad structural sense. Uh, but it's, it's Darcy Habrell, is that how you pronounce her name? Correct. It's Darcy uh, Habrell who was facilitating all of this for the kids. Uh, it was just so clear how much she gave them since first September. What is it, the last of October right now? And it's only been a couple of months and they were able to uh, craft speeches and give ideas. And watch each other as a class and then refine the next group's presentation and responses in the tiny bit of time when the judges were out of the room and then they'd come, we'd come back in the room. Well together and because and, even like the first groups, they, they were like filling out what the judges were going to anticipate and then tell that they helped each other out, which was great to see. Yeah, Darcy put a political science professor and a history major on the same judging team. and Yeah, they were with we me. Were, <laughs> We were always a little bit later than the other group finishing up with the kids, and I, I'd love to go and do that again. That was a really good experience, and I left happy. So was that a competition or a It's the like We the People practice. competition. Yeah. So, uh, when we do that awards night at the end of the year, this is the We the People recognition. When all those kids come up uh, onto the stage, that was it. So, the one, yeah. so some, of the, some of the students, the ones that performed, because um, they'll usually take like one class to state, um, they'll go to the Olympia Capitol building and perform against other high schools in the area. Apple. Yeah, I was going to talk about the Honor Citizens Tour because it was the first time that we had attempted uh, a conversation with uh, citizens with our new linkage and communications model and uh, we presented them with the citizenship results policy that was the one right citizenship yeah of course uh, and got some really good feedback about what language was missing or superfluous that uh, talk about in greater detail uh, a little bit later on if you like uh, with respect to linkage and communications we're meeting this Friday um, to refine those questions and go over that in even greater detail uh, and uh, look forward to the next uh, events. We've got a principal for a day coming up. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. This, this Friday. Friday. Friday, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's on my calendar, I promise. <laughs> um, and uh, a really good group of people who've been invited to come and, and feed things back to us and uh, maybe we'll have a couple of things to say to them. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and this just came across my emails, probably in your email too, is that uh, I think it's tomorrow that the Supreme Court of Washington is going to be discussing Enhanced Senate Bill 2242, which is the law that changed the funding model for all the districts in the state. Um, might predict the state is going to go in saying, look, we did it, and uh, we know from, uh, well, from our WASDA regional meeting and the discussions there, uh, there is, I guess it's news, the complainants group, appellants, I'm not sure of the term there, uh, are going to go, oh, no, you didn't. And uh, we're just going to have to see what 
the Supreme Court thinks, but that is in motion and happening and could change, could make Mike's life much more complicated than it already is, uh, or less complicated. Who knows? I'm looking forward to seeing how it happens. The arguments were actually this morning. Were they this morning? Yes. Thanks for that correction. I got the email that late. Yeah, I got the email at five today. Hmm. Sorry about that. Yeah, the arguments were this morning. I stand corrected. Uh, and that's it, unless you want me to also talk about the regional meeting, but. but we talked about McCleary and uh, we, we ended up in a carpool out to Kathlamet, Washington. And I uh, got to see the operations of a school with a graduating class of 30-something. Uh, so each, each grade had about a slightly over an evergreen classroom full of kids in it all the way up through. And it was just kind of fascinating to compare their approach to things to the approach of a large system like ours um, and uh, see the focus still on kids. but the approach different and then, uh, we had a we had some time during the meeting to do this open table discussion about student safety that uh, you know kind of raised a question in my mind uh, about whether we've addressed those in our operational expectations as clearly as we could and maybe that's something we could loop back and, and think about as either another OE or another result it into an existing policy in a way that makes it easy to sustain the safety procedures and policies uh, that receive, we've got now. Did you receive that list? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that, I really like that WASDA added that kind of value to the regional meetings. Um, uh, just, I guess, for your information, I think all of us checked yes, we, the district would be happy to host a, one of those meetings in yeah, the near future. It's, it's been a little over, little over three years yeah, I since the last, maybe the fall of Joan's last, uh, Joan Skelton's last mm -hmm. regional meeting would have been that it one. It's over at Cascadia, huh? and known as the Skill Center. It was, well, everyone loved it. Want us? Indeed. Want to come back? Oh yeah, nope. That's what I had. Um, I wanted to add that John and Rob and I were at the CDR CREDC CREDC. I always get those <laughs> initials wrong. Um, meeting. It was really interesting. They had um, they had a panel of industry leaders that shared what they feel um, kind of the future holds and what they're looking for. And the biggest part of the conversation had to do with having talent, local talent, to hire. And that they're having a really hard time, especially in the technology fields, finding the talent. And they're having to bring people in. You know, we're, they've got the competition from Portland, metro area. Um, and so, there was a lot of talk about um, internships, and we chuckled a little bit because it's something we've been advocating for for a long time, and we've got some really great examples of internships um, going. So it was good to hear that, and how that rolls out will remain. But I thought it was it was interesting. It sounded to me like a commitment to partner um, to me. So. Yeah. yeah, I uh, well, you know, I I took the mic for a question, uh, and I'd forgotten I'd done that, uh, but <laughs> uh, it was wanting to know what they could imagine, how they could imagine a high school graduating senior in their company. What would what would they do? Uh, because I've noticed. Um, and this goes all the way back to my senior year, actually, is that I was, I was told about companies 
uh, in the generation immediately preceding mine and how they would bring in high school seniors and graduates and apprentice them into the company. Uh, ITT had a technical institute which was then privatized later on and, and failed in the last recession, but it was a company school. And I wondered what their thinking was about whether that kind of thing could return. And that's not the way I phrased the question, but I wanted them to picture a high school, a graduating senior and uh, what kind of positions. And I, didn't, I don't think they really had uh, a clear idea except for the, the one panel member who called for different curriculum. Columbia Machine and Columbia Machine. That's right. Columbia Machine answered of our interns answered already. that by saying we do this all the time and this is the model. Um, but I was I, I'm hoping that the conversation started something. Well, the other thing too that was interesting is um, one of them mentioned having teachers have internships there so they could see real mm -hmm. world application yeah. mm -hmm. for what they're teaching. And I know there was a time in our district going back a ways that we did some of that during the summer. Um, but what I, I don't know what happened to it and I don't know if it was a funding issue or, or what. That's something I'm gonna have to do a little more investigating, but I thought it was, that was an interesting um, comment by them as well. So anyway, internships was the word of the day. And yeah, they also commented on they need students that can get along, which really validated our social emotional learning initiative that we're in the midst of. And if you look at the board's results policies, you've got academic achievement, but you also have social emotional growth and citizenship. And it's that well-rounded student that they're looking for, not just academics. Aubrey. Yep, they were very clear about that. Mm -hmm. It was a good meeting. I enjoyed it. Um, covered the other thing I wanted to cover, Asda meetings. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, do we have any future agenda items? We want. Other than what we're thinking about looping back on a couple of things, just basically. Yeah. With the um, yeah, I suppose I could more formally propose that as a discussion item in a workshop in the future. Okay. Gotta, gotta go through that. Okay. Uh, and that's in context to seeing Sean, um, sorry, Shane Gardner hard at work after five o'clock on an emergency plan. So mm -hmm. we already know that it's on staff's mind and, and a very significant core focus. Session amongst ourselves about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that that's reflected in what we communicate to the community. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to call this meeting into recess. We'll um, take a break, sign documents, then we'll re reconvene in a workshop where we'll have a board meeting debrief. We'll have, um, we'll review OE4 personnel administration. We'll have a facilities update regarding the bond proposal. We'll have a policy review, a legislative update, and an additional superintendent's update. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>